it's been a while since I've done uh, any updates on the Nintendo PC and let me tell you why so it turns out that Zotac um, with their Fusion 350 board that I've been using in my Nintendo PC build it turns out that they have a major issue with the HDMI out on this particular board which makes it so if you use the HDMI port it works in monitors like computer monitors but if you actually hook it up to a TV it can't do the right handshake and it never is able to output HDMI correctly so for a console device that needs HDMI and the only port on the back that exists is HDMI that board is worthless and after doing all that work to make it up to speed so my only option has been to well I've discovered a, a different option that I can use on here and let me explain what's happening so far so with what I've created for this build these ports need to be lined up exactly the right way for the whole case to work otherwise my whole project is bored so after searching the web all over the place for alternatives because it's not it's not easy in this custom case to just swap motherboards you have to get the exact right size components so what I found is this is the motherboard that's in the Nintendo PC right now if you look on the back it has uh, specific ports in a specific location namely the HDMI port right next to the USB 3.0 ports so I found Zotac offers another board that has the exact same setup uh, if you look there, you've got your USB ports with the HDMI. So it's actually the exact same configuration for the rear of the device. So that's good. The other benefit of this board, this is an H67 ITX Wi-Fi. This board will accept Sandy Bridge processors. Um, so it should be um, quite a lot more power. It should be much more powerful than the than the vision board, the MD vision board, which has the <clears throat> E350 APU platform. So um, the downside is it might run a lot, quite a bit hotter, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so the goal now is to take out the old motherboard out of there and put in this new motherboard with Intel processor. So I decided to go for something that had HD 3000 graphics, which is why I got the i3-2105 secondhand chip that I found from someone. So um, hopefully it's all working, and I'll tear this apart, put the new motherboard in, new CPU, see if I can get it all fit together still. And once I do that, it should be perfect. So we'll go from there. Okay, so we're looking at the Zotac H67 ITX Wi-Fi uh, Mini ITX motherboard. Uh, features USB 3.0, DDR3 memory, uh, small form factor, supports up to 16 gigabytes of RAM across two DDR3 slots. Uh, this board does not accept Ivy Bridge processors, so you have to look for older Sandy Bridge version uh, Intel Core processors. So let's take a look at what's inside. There's actually quite a bit in here. Some adapter for power. Four SATA cables that are actually pretty nice with locking mechanism. Uh, we've got low profile USB connectors USB 3 looks like uh, VGA to DVI adapter motherboard manual user manual backplate Wi-Fi antennas, an additional mini small form factor PCI bracket, not sure what that one's for, 
And we got two bone steak. Got the motherboard itself. Uh, standard mini ITX size. Lots of uh, SATA connectors at the bottom. You got six in total. USB 3.0, display port, DVI, eSATA, gigabit network. Uh, it's pretty much fully loaded board in a mini ITX form factor, so uh, we'll see how it works. Okay, so I was finally able to mod that board enough for it to fit into the case. Um, everything seems to be back in place. Um, and looks like it's going to fit pretty well. So, pretty pleased. I'm just going to have to test the power consumption again and the heat levels. Um, I'm worried that it may get too hot in there for that Sandy Bridge processor. If that's the case, I can... Uh, do some undervolting, uh, underclocking on that chip and see if that yields better results, but most likely we're going to be fine.